Hello, 5 Minute Friday number 33 and today I'm going to take you all the way from an STL to a printed part in the new Up Mini 2 3D printer. In the next few weeks I'm going to start manufacturing this, the MPCNC, which is a 3D printed CNC router. It's got a number of 3D printed parts but it's also got these metal conduits that form the rails. I'm going to be using some 25.4 or 1 inch stainless steel tube. And to help drill in that, since I don't have access to a milling machine at the moment, we're going to make these little jigs. Now this is made by the Thingiverse user Geo Dave, so thank you very much. Um, and basically they hold the, the conduit in place just so that you can uh, run a drill through it and it keeps everything nice and square without having to worry about collet blocks or clocking things up properly in a machine vise. From the open SCAD file I was able to change some of the variables, namely 25.4 tube diameter and then export as an STL. Now my standard workflow, which I'll go through in another video, is to export things to NetFab and just check that the STL is absolutely fine, there's no holes or any repairs need to be made before I get it into the software. From there, we go into the UpMaker software called UpStudio. So the actual software itself is pretty slick. One of the reasons why I chose this printer is you can connect via Wi-Fi and to do that, just a case of being on the same network, having set it up in the first place, it's that easy. Choose your printer. And immediately what you'll see is up in this top corner here, you'll see a few little bits of uh, metrics. That's the hot end temperature and the bed temperature. So we'll jump into the settings here and we'll get this thing heating up. So I've got my drill guide here. I'm just gonna drag it into the window. It pops straight in with uh, very little hassle. You don't have to worry about snapping it to the Z plane or anything like that. From there, we can choose some settings. So I'm going to choose the infill. I'm going to go for 0.35 layer height and we'll go for fast. I'll hit print. So that print took just over an hour on the lowest quality. And you notice in this corner, bottom right, there is a little bit of lift in here, which is the first time I've seen, but this is also the first time that I've um, printed in fast mode. So it should at least mean that getting the print off the bed is really easy. And as much as I was silly about this glove, it's actually coming pretty useful. There you go, straight off. Let's have a look at how it comes away from the raft. So here's the jig itself. It's come out, it's actually reasonable quality. There is a little bit of lifting, but there's a good hearty raft on the bottom, which has served to take some of that out. I'll be doing the uh, 3D printer torture test in coming weeks, just to find out what all the different print surfaces and settings actually are like. So this is pretty typical. And that's not half bad for a, um, a print that took just about an hour. It's 20% infill. It's got a pretty good surface finish on there. Slight bit of lifting, but it's gonna more than do the job. But this is pretty thoughtless in a good way. I just press print and then an object appears, which is at this stage what I'm looking for because I'm after creating bigger, perhaps more interesting projects. So 3D printing is just a tool for me now and it's not a hobby or a goal in of itself. Before you go anywhere, do consider checking out our channel of the day, which is some old guy coding. There's some absolutely brilliant stuff on there. I'm currently looking at making an MPCNC and this guy's been there, done it, done a low rider, loads of other interesting electronics projects too. So check that out and also have a look at some of our videos in this playlist, the Up Mini 2 3D printer. So until next time, do consider liking, subscribing and dropping us a comment and we'll see you next time.